Well, good morning and welcome on this cold uh, wintry morning here as we continue Pastor Dawn's series. Uh, actually, this concludes her series on looking, what, what am I looking for? And today we turn to the Gospel of Luke and um, we're looking for lost sheep. Uh, just a quick overview of uh, how the Gospels fit together. Mark was the first Gospel that was written um, and it, uh, it stresses the humanity of Christ. Um, there was this discussion early in, in the uh, formation of the church of whether or not Christ was really a human being uh, or was he just a, um, a ghost, if you will. Um, was he really God uh, become human? and dwelling among us. So that's stressed in, in Mark's gospel. It's also thought that uh, the gospel of Mark, um, that as Mark followed Peter around, that what's contained in the gospel is uh, Peter's preaching to the early church. And then we have Matthew, um, one of the, la was a later gospel, but that was written to the Jewish believers, uh, primarily to those that were in uh, in around Jerusalem, um, as opposed to Luke and John, who are dealing with an audience that is dispersed from Jerusalem. Luke uh, deals with the oppressed people, those that uh, were oppressed either by the government or, as we'll see today, uh, oppressed by the religious leaders of the day. And then the Gospel of John, as we talked uh, back with the I Am series, is the uh, church dealing with living with the teaching of God, uh, a teaching of Christ, that the, the second coming of Christ is not going to happen as they thought it was. And so now they've shifted into a, a realm of looking at the uh, teachings of Christ and seeing what does this mean to live in this world today. In Luke's gospel, the chapter 15, it's also referred to um, the, the gospel seeking lost. Uh, it contains three parables that uh, deal with uh, somebody seeking something that's lost. The first parable is the lost sheep, the one that we'll deal with today. The second is the lost coin. Uh, the lady who's lost a coin and he, she turns her house upside down uh, and doesn't rest until she's found the coin. And then the last parable is the one that is probably more well known and referenced in this gospel, uh, in this chapter at least, is that of the prodigal son. The father who continues to seek the son, uh, even though he's um, uh, run off and, and uh, essentially turned his back on his family. Uh, and the father never gives up uh, seeking and hoping uh, for his return. <clears throat> but today we have uh, the, God, the uh, lost sheep, and this deals with the first seven verses of chapter 15, and I'll read them here uh, out of the Common English Bible. All the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus told them this parable. Suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't he leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he is thrilled and places it on his shoulders. When he arrives home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Celebrate with me because I found my lost sheep. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who cha changes both heart and life over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their hearts and lives. <clears throat> there is, as always in Jesus' parables, uh, a background that this is heard against. He's addressing, uh, as, as he goes on, uh, He's addressing the Pharisees and religious leaders uh, of that day. Um, they're upset because Jesus 
uh, doesn't separate himself from uh, the sinners and the tax collectors. There were sinners and then there were sinners and that's where the tax collectors were. They were the worst of the worst. Uh, the Pharisees referred to these sometimes as sinners. They were also referred to as people of the land. Um, and, and they were, we, we read a lot and know a lot about the, uh, um, the Jews and the Samaritans, that they were separate. And uh, the Jewish people considered the Samaritans unclean and would go out of their way. They would travel a longer period of time to keep from going the most direct route across Samaria to get to where the coast, uh, they would take a long circular, uh, circular route to get there just so they wouldn't have to be confronted with the Samaritans. Well, the uh, people of the land are, are similar in, in the, at least for where the religious leaders are concerned, in that um, you just didn't have anything to do with them. Um, no association whatsoever. Uh, William Barclay says that uh, if your daughter was to marry someone uh, of one of the people of the land, um, they had a saying that it was like uh, it was taking her uh, out to be devoured by a lion. Um, in other words, they didn't think very highly of those people. And here Jesus is, he's not only associating with them, he goes in and has a meal with them, sets down at their table. And that really, really upset them. And so this parable of the lost, uh, the lost sheep, uh, is in direct, uh, uh, the audience there is the, are the Pharisees, religious leaders. And he's telling them, you got it all wrong. Um, that God is concerned about these people as much as he is about you. Um, <clears throat> One thing that um, ha had always intrigued me, as I've read this before, is the shepherd leaving the other sheep to go find the lost. Um, what about the safety of those of the 99? Well, here again uh, with Barclay, I, I found a little bit of a reference there that most times the shepherds were not out there by themselves. It was a solitary life and not a lot of uh, human interaction, but generally one or more shepherds would combine their flocks so they could share the duties. Uh, and this way one could sleep at night while one watched over the flock. And if you had to go find that lost sheep, there was the other shepherd to watch over the, the larger flock. The shepherds were also accountable for all of the sheep that had been entrusted to them. Unlike uh, the reference to David, who was watching his father's sheep, most of the shepherds were hired and the sheep were, sheep were entrusted to them. And if they gave them a hundred sheep, they expected them to come back with a hundred or proof as to what had happened to the other sheep and that uh, they would bring back the skin uh, of the animal to show this is what happened to the animal, why it was lost to a, a, a attack by a, a, a wild animal or whatever, to, uh, so that there was this accounting. <clears throat> and so, as Jesus uh, says, that the shepherd is not going to let that sheep stay lost. He's gonna go find that sheep and bring it back. And um, I, I remember, um, in Sunday school was a child seeing a picture, uh, one of the pictures that was used in the Sunday school of Jesus with the sheep uh, uh, draped over his shoulders. And it, it just uh, occurred to me as I read this, I had not made that connection before, but in this passage, that's that reference that Jesus, that shepherd carrying that sheep across his shoulders like that uh, in return. Um, there's another connection here that I had not noticed before. And in looking online for some more um, commentary on this, one of my uh, go-to commentaries, uh, the, the uh, Bible study that Cokesbury publishes, Genesis to Revelation, um, doesn't 
deal with chapter 15 at all. It doesn't exist in that commentary uh, or that uh, uh, teaching on the Gospel of Luke. And I, that just intrigued me. So I went looking on the internet and I found a relationship um, that when you hear these words, you'll make the connection. Um, but I was surprised that uh, other commentaries did not uh, do not make this connection. <clears throat> you remember in, uh, back with the I Am series, uh, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And we talked about what that meant as being a shepherd. We also talked about a little bit about that Jesus was taking on the role that had been uh, uh, written about in the Old Testament where God is the shepherd looking after the people. Uh, in, in the 23rd Psalm, David says, the Lord is my shepherd, indicating that God is his shepherd. Well, there's a passage in Ezekiel that relates to uh, this uh, lost sheep in a way that uh, I had not seen this before. In the 34th chapter of Ezekiel, the 11th through the 17th, 16th verses, the Lord God proclaims, I myself will search for my flock and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out the flock when some of the flock have been scattered, so will I seek out my flock. I will rescue them from all the places where they have were scattered during the time of clouds and thick darkness. I will gather and lead them out from the countries and, and the peoples, and I will bring them to their own fertile land. I will feed them on Israel's highlands, along the riverbeds, and all the habit, inhabited places. I will feed them in good pasture, and their sheepfold will be there, on Israel's lofty highlands. On Israel's highlands they will lie down in a secure fold, and feed on green pastures. I myself will feed my flock and make them lie down. This is what the Lord God says, I will seek out the lost bring back the strays, bind up the wounded, and strengthen them. <clears throat> Do you see the connection there? Uh, like I said, uh, I'm surprised that there's not more made of this connection here, that <clears throat> just as in the Gospel of John, Jesus is saying that I'm the good shepherd. He's taking on the role uh, 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 of the holding himself up uh, as God, uh, that this is what God has done, this is what I'm doing because of my relationship with God. And <clears throat> here we have God uh, telling the Israelite people uh, almost exactly what Jesus says in this parable uh, about why, uh, looking out for the lost um, and, and bringing them back into the fold. I think ironically, where the Ezekiel passage uh, is, is referencing the uh, Israelite people, that they have strayed away from God and God saying that I'm going to reach out and I'm not going to rest till I've gotten all of you uh, back into uh, the fold here. Uh, and Jesus is saying the same thing and he's referencing God's people. But, and they're also Israelite people, um, but they're people that the Pharisees, the re religious leaders are saying aren't worthy uh, of being found. Um, and, and God has said to them through Ezekiel that all of you are worthy. Um, I, I just find a little bit of irony there that the Pharisees could turn their back on, on that teaching there. How does it make you feel to think that uh, uh, that Christ will seek you out? Well, to me, the old saying is safety in numbers. A predator is not going to attack a flock of animals or uh, group together because it's too great. If you watch nature series, the wolves and all will pick out the old, the ones that get left behind, the stragglers. That's the ones they go for. That's just like in life. The devil may be after the person wants to get away from the church a little bit, uh, associate with gangs, 
uh, have other uh, interests other than Christian attitude. The church members itself, they are uh, got support within themselves. So therefore, they are knitted together and they're a more formidable force than somebody by themselves that's outside and they've got a straggler and a predator might get them. Or they'll get tangled up in their thongs and stuff and can't keep up with the other group. But if you have somebody as Jesus or, or somebody that's going out and seeking them, they can recognize that it's Christ in them looking for them. So it's good, enough good in all of us. And, but what was that old saying? But uh, there's so much good in the worst of us and uh, <laughs> bad in the best of us and booze in the other to uh, talk about the others. But uh, anyway, to me, because when I was a kid, our cow used to have a calf and there's further way down in the pasture. Well, I had to go out and get it because my dad would get home after work in dark. Well, we couldn't go tromping down through the woods after dark to try to find it. So I would, after school, go down through the woods when we figured the cow was over ready to come fresh and have the calf. And I used to carry the calf on my shoulder, just like talking about carrying the sheep on the shoulder. So that reckon carrying a calf on your shoulder, you can only do it so far and you got to rest a while. You know? But the cow wouldn't attack us because she knew us and they knew we were trying to get them to safety, bring them back up to the barn put the calf inside the shed so it would be protected. And she followed right along. And she would follow right along, but she knew we were trying to be good to them. And it's the same way as somebody uh, strayed away from the church, the flock <coughs> is where the church is. They strayed away. They might have gone with the gang or gone into other things, other addictions, and they need to be brought back. And that's what Jesus and God wants to do is go and get the reach out for those people and bring them back to the church. And that's, to me, that's what that was all about. As you were talking, I, I remember, um, I, I think it was Chuck Swindoll that used this illustration in one of his Bible teachings of, of uh, a young man who had gotten involved with drugs and had gotten, gotten himself separated from his family and other people. And he found himself outside of church. It was a downtown church uh, I the way Chuck told the story I'd say it was like a high church uh, and felt compelled to go in and it was the service was just about ready to start and the, all, pretty much all the pews were filled up and so the young man just went down and sat down on the floor in front of the front pew uh, he was used to being on the floor and that just seemed like the place to be the ushers are huddled in the back trying to figure out how they're going to deal with this. Actually, uh, the way Swindoll told the story is they were trying to decide who, who was going to get the short straw that was going to go down there and tell the young man he had to leave. And while they were doing this, one of the older men in the congregation, one of the patriarchs of the congregation that people looked up to, got up and using his cane, went down to where this young man was sitting and painfully put himself down on the floor beside the young man, taking it out of the usher's hands. And I think that's what Jesus is saying to us uh, with this passage uh, about the lost, um, of welcoming them in and, and celebrating uh, as the prodigal uh, son was celebrated by his father. But the older brother didn't celebrate, did he? No. Any other thoughts? The one that comes to mind is when, when you talk about the, uh, the lost sheep is the, the hymn, I was once lost, now I'm found. Oh, and, yes. and I think to me that in the truest sense of the word, that's heartwarming that somebody's going to come find you right? and give you the opportunity to repent. Uh -huh. Well, again, it's uh, nice to be sitting at the table with you all. I get a lot of inspiration and uh, from you all being here, and I really, really appreciate uh, your dedication to coming. And I thank all of you for joining us uh, and hope this has been beneficial. I know with the weather being like it is that uh, many people are not getting out uh, right now. And it's fortunate we have this technology that we can still be together even though we're apart. Uh, and so I hope this has been a blessing to you. Uh, for those of you that are able to get out, 
I look forward to seeing you in our worship uh, later on as Pastor Don uh, takes this passage uh, and expounds it for us. Thank you. God bless you.